Hello, my name is Jeanette Villarreal Hamilton, and today I will be showing you how to build a set, light, and take some awesome photos of our Sabretooth premium format figure. Let's go! So before starting a shoot, I need to figure out what kind of environment is going to be best suited for Sabretooth. A lot of times it's not quite clear, but in this case our answer is right here. He's on a snowy mountaintop in a foresty setting, so that's what we're going to build on. I'm going to grab an apple box and that's going to be the perspective of the mountain. I'll get some crumpled black paper, I've got some bits of driftwood, I have a couple of tree props, this rocky structure that I'll place next to Sabretooth. And for the snow, what we use is just some all-purpose flour. We sprinkle down on top of the set and throw it up in the air to create a snowy effect. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get started building. First, I'm gonna take the apple box. Next, take this sheet of paper. Basically what this is gonna do is get rid of this harsh line and create more of a, a mountain shape. Gonna take saber tooth and set him down. I like the base to kind of peek out just a little bit over the lip. Next, we're gonna start building some jagged rocks. And you just take a piece of paper, just start crumpling. And you just start setting it down. So you take your other piece, set that down. I'm gonna start adding little log elements, placing them in between the rocks. From here I can start adding some snow, start kind of filling in the scene. You may have to dust off your statue a little later once you're done. Here is this rocky structure. I'm just gonna include the very edge just to make it look like a cavernous wall. We got our trees. These are definitely gonna shift around and move once I have my camera framed to this environment. For product photography, we don't want any distracting elements to make the piece look a little too busy. The next step is to frame the shot. So I will take my camera, and from there, most likely I'm gonna tweak some rocks around, and I'll start moving Sabretooth to where I want him in the camera, and that looks pretty good. The next step is to light the environment. So for this environment, I'm gonna light it to replicate Blue Hour. I'm gonna need two sources of light, one being the top light, which basically acts as a sky, the other being a key light that's gonna light Sabretooth. So for that top light to resemble Blue Hour, I'm gonna start with, you guessed it, a blue gel. To give it a little more depth, I'm gonna add a purple gel as well. I will just overlap them and tape them together. Once the gels are taped to the light, I'm gonna move the light directly above Sabretooth and get it as high as possible. That's gonna give a more accurate illusion to the sky. So top light is in position, it's gelled and ready to go. I'm gonna fire off a test shot. I've got my camera set at F16 at 1 1 25th of a second and I've got the ISO at 250. And now I'm gonna take my can of fog and I'm gonna spray it all over and fire off that top light. That's what's gonna create that nice, moody atmosphere that we're looking for. Okay, so the photo's looking pretty dark. I think what I'll do is I'm gonna change the aperture. I'm gonna go from F16 to about F8, maybe F5.6. Everything's just a little bit too much in focus and I really want that foreground to be a little more blurred. Okay, so it looks like F5.6 did the trick. It's looking great, and now it's time to move on to that key light. As you can see, the key light is just one giant soft box. Since we're lighting for more of a nighttime scene, the blue hour, this might be too much light. This is more of a daylight type of setting. So I'm gonna take this grid, place it on top of the light, and what this does is it basically narrows the light down and it eliminates the spread. All right, I've got my grid on, I'm ready to take that test shot, so let me go ahead and fire away. So Sabretooth looks good. He's nice and well lit. However, all the light that's falling on him is also falling onto the rest of the environment, meaning that blue hour is completely killed. So I'm gonna do two separate images and merge them together in Photoshop. So now that we have a plan established for that, I'm gonna go ahead and have some extra fun with some added effects using my canned haze and a little bit of flour.
And that's a wrap. I had a lot of fun building this set and giving you guys a peek into our process. Don't forget to like this video, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment below.